As the state of ENS enters week two, what are the three primary components that make up the ENS system? And how will this ENS system dynamically evolve before our eyes? Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. So here we are finding ourselves smack dab in the middle just after week two of this brand new ENS system, this Ethereum name system for domain names. At the same time, there's a, a lot happening today and Ethereum is just blowing up blowing past $100 in value, and we're gonna be going into that price in a second. But with all this talk and all this excitement and people seemingly just catching on with what's going on with this land grab, new Ethereum domain name rush, uh, there's a lot of questions about what this system is and how do we think about it. Uh, some people, most people can maybe understand how it's similar to domain names, but maybe it's a little more difficult for people to think about how it's really gonna be different. So with that, I wanna get right into it, go over where we are with the new ENS market and uh, go over the market, go over some details. And with that, let's discuss. So uh, real quick, looking over at coinmarketcap.com, we have Bitcoin all-time highs at 1951. I think we can expect to see this break through that $2,000 mark uh, probably next week. Uh, we have some extreme conferences uh, coming up about Ethereum, and it's going to create a lot of excitement for Ethereum. And when people want to buy Ethereum, uh, you know, I'd say half the time that involves buying Bitcoin, even though they can buy Ethereum directly through Coinbase and websites like Coinbase. Everything is really connected to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is our reserve currency of the world, reserve currency of the cryptoverse. And uh, uh, it, it's interesting to recognize how these are connected. But again, Ethereum blowing up $120, up 25% just about in the past 24 hours is just amazing. Looking over at ens.codetrack.io at the information here that they're pulling for us, we see that there's been 81,000 auctions started. Uh, we have over 3,300 different Ethereum addresses bidding with uh, a, over a quarter of a million Ether deposited, just giant numbers. We currently have 34,000 Ether locked in for these domain names. And out of all the domain names possible, over a quarter of them, 27% have been released. So we're still looking at three out of four domain names, just about three out of four domain names that have not been released to the marketplace. Everything from the highest quality domain names available all the way down to uh, gibberish that, that you wouldn't be interested in the first place. But the point is, is that everyone that wants your domain name, you, you might not be thinking about it yet and someone else is thinking about it. The domain name that you want, that they're thinking about, is on their list. They're ready to go. As soon as that auction opens, they're ready to, to bid on it. And if they could, they would go for it right now. What this is showing us is that for 75% or you know, 72%, uh, we have 72% of domain names available still ready for you to search and take advantage of the opportunity for your brand or your entrepreneurial endeavor. So some of these featured names, uh, just to give you guys an idea, we had the, the largest bid ever, uh, ever, you know, in the past two weeks uh, for an F domain named Sports Bet. How many, how many eights are these? We're talking uh, almost 200,000 F they dropped for this. Uh, we have other interesting names. We have uh, Elon Musk. Uh, someone dropped 71 on that. I hope it was someone named Elon Musk. Uh, and just, you know, really interesting high level domains. Express.f, 333F, TechCrunch.f, 
42. I'm really interested to find out uh, how many of these are going to be typo or brand squatters uh, squatting on other businesses, legitimate domain names. I'm definitely not a big fan of that. Make up your own brands or find your own unique words. Don't try to steal someone else's name. Uh, you know, not unless it's a general, general, uh, general word. So over here, most expensive names. I, I don't. I think there's other names that have been pretty expensive. I think Blackjack, if I'm not mistaken, should probably be in this list. But again, someone has uh, spent over six thousand at for exchange uh, for wallets, over a thousand for capital at. We have over one thousand one hundred eleven. It's just amazing to see the energy and the money and the excitement going into this marketplace. I, I think we're all aware. <clears throat> so with that, real quick, I just wanted to go over what are the major components of the ENS system. And so we're all familiar with traditional .com domain names and all these new, you know, crazy domain names, .shopping and stuff like that, where we have, uh, you know, the, the domain name registers, selling domains, we have people buying those domains, and it's, it's pretty simple, it's pretty cut and dry, it's just basic chess. But with this new ENS system, I sort of think about it like 3D chess. It's much more dynamic, and so let's talk about uh, why that is and some of these details. And so we have three major components of the ENS system. We have the registry, the registrars, and the resolvers. And so the registry is the central directory of the ENS system. It keeps a list of every ENS domain and subdomain and sub subdomain and so forth on the system. So the uh, the central directory ENS, I guess they get their permission from Ethereum uh, just by placing themselves on the Ethereum network. And here we have uh, ENS registry, which is the, the central directory. You can see here the root, then we have ETH, uh, ETH, and then under ETH we can have wallets or contract addresses. We're gonna talk about this. And these wallets or contract addresses are then connected to the subdomain. So you could be nick.wallet.eth, and that's a, that's a unique uh, domain, a unique address. And then this uh, 0xe, this Ethereum public address connected to that, that address can be a payment address for someone to refer money to you, or that address can be a swarm contract. So, uh, so instead of it being a, a, a point of payment transfer, that can actually have a function inside the network. It could be a, a service where you can send F to it, and then whatever that developer has it do, it could perform some function just as the ENS system is a smart contract system that performs a function. So, uh, so with that, this bit in purple here, names can be owned by external accounts, that's like you or I, uh, our public addresses, or by contracts. And so, as we're just saying, the ENS system is a contract. When you send your ether to secure a name, you're not sending your ether to John or Mike or Nick or, or anyone like that. You're sending your, your Ethereum to a smart contract. And so these new Ethereum domain names, these new F ENS domain names, Again, it can be someone can someone can set it up so it's simply a payment redirection method, or this domain name can be independent system, an independent smart contract system that someone can program to do, you know, anything I suppose. And so, when a contract owns a name, we call that contract a registrar, and the registrars are the second component of the ENS system. And so, if you own uh, if you own wallet.eth, like we know someone does, they can take wallet.eth and give ownership of, of that, give governance of wallet.eth to the smart contract system. And now, uh, now that smart contract, that you know, essentially that computer system owns that name, and now that's an independent registrar that you can set up to then sell uh, these subdomains to anyone that wants it. So. Um, it could be for sale or it could be for free. So if the wallet service, they want to offer the free wallet service, they can have it set up so everyone can have their simple address, yourname.wallet.f for free. Uh, or it could be set up in a way where if you wanted 
yourname.wallet.eth and you can pay you know whatever they decide to charge for that subdomain and then you can use it for either receiving payments or for your own smart contract system if they authorize you if the, the owner of the root domain or the main domain in this case the word wallets if however they decide to run the system so anyone that owns a domain can assign ownership to a contract or create a registrar of your own and then the third component we have resolvers and the resolvers are simply contracts that tell you the resource associated with a name and that can be uh, a, a, again uh, either an ethereum address a swarm hash or a public key so uh, this is all open source everyone can uh, look up this information and uh, with this article it, it just goes in the name hashes and label hashes and so I'm just going to talk about that just real quick because it's going to be relevant to the information that we see and then I'm going to be talking about this further in, in a, uh, maybe the next video where we talk about transferring ownership of these ENS domains so when we have the first part of the word in this example here the word vitalic and then we have dot f the system is hashing these two words separately so it's hashing vitalic in a cryptographic hash which you know looks like a long crazy number that uh, uh, represents in in code the word vitalic separately eth is also cryptographically hashed and then the whole word vitalic dot f is cryptographically hashed and the reason this is important is because the cryptographic hash of vitalic f is different than the hash of just vitalic and so if we go over if i if i jump over to etherscan.io this is a, an important uh, major website that uh, the entire ethereum community uses i uh, recommend you go check it out you can pop in these ethernet <clears throat> or these f <laughs> domains and you can get information on them, all the public information. So here I put in sportsbet.f and we can see here that uh, who the owner of this is. We got the, the winning deed here. We have, do to do, who is the owner? Oh, well you don't have the owner. Okay, so this is actually still in the reveal process. So reveal bids by, <clears throat> so they have another day, 14 hours to reveal bids here. So we actually don't have an owner yet. But up here, at etherscan.io I just want to let you guys know that we have a label hash <clears throat> and then we have the name hash and so the label hash is for this is the cryptographic hash for the word sports bet all lowercase if any of these letters were uppercase then the hash would be different if you're using myetherwallet.com and if I go in here and I and I do capital S capital T and hit enter they have this program so they automatically lowercase all of these letters for you. But if you're doing this line item code or if you're using a different service where it doesn't lowercase the letters for you, you're gonna run into problems. So always make sure that these letters are lowercased because otherwise the cryptographic hash uh, representation of the word is different. <clears throat> so the uh, label hash represents just the, the, the word of the domain and then the name hash represents the whole domain. Awesome. Okay, moving on. So this has been a crazy ride. Week one was uh, just really, really interesting because we have a lot of extremes. We have on one extreme crazy sums of ETH uh, being locked in for these domains. And then on the other hand, we have highly valuable domains that are going for pennies on the ether. And uh, with that, more people are learning about the ENS system, more people are bidding and locking in domains. And so let's take a look from Nick Johnson how the system is going in week two. <clears throat> and so this was written, I believe, uh, yesterday. And at the time that he wrote this, 25% of the names are available. So in the past day, 2% of this has gone up because now we, as a second ago, we're at 27%. So he wrote here that 25% of the names are available, 70,000 auctions started, 31,000 bids, and uh, jumping to the end, over 6,000 names registered with 
uh, which is I guess 25, 20, would that be 25 percent or at, at least right or at most. So going through this information, uh, when we look at the data, they have data here to show the total ether per day and they had this huge spike. This huge spike right here they're saying happened because of this ginormous bet for sportsbet.f. There's <clears throat> been a couple large bets lately. So we're seeing a fairly steady uptick, uptick in March with the number of bids per day increasing, which is what we're expecting as more people learn about the system. This, of course, means that names are going to become more competitive and the average value per domain that someone secures, I would imagine will go up as more competition and the, uh, the average number of uh, people bidding on each domain increases, the average uh, bid is gonna increase overall to win that name. So the sooner you start bidding, especially for the names that are available now, the, the stronger position that you'll have and portfolio you'll have for the words that you're gonna care about as it relates to your life and your businesses. Uh, so skipping ahead here, what Nick goes on to say is that despite the increasing bidding activity, the odds, at least in uh, through the first and second week, have remained pretty steady and that there's a 90% chance that if no one is, uh, if your name isn't added to a list because no one is thinking about it, that there's a 90% chance that you're going to secure that name and that if it is in a list that people do know about it then your chances decrease to about 40 percent so the only way that people know about these domains if someone thinks of the word and searches it types it in and some people are doing this they have some bots that are doing this there's a, a twitter bot that's sending out this information but there's just a lot of words in the dictionary so there's a lot of great words that aren't being advertised and if they're not being advertised the chances of someone thinking about that and spending a lot of F is, is as we can see here, significantly low. <clears throat> so um, it's clear that even the most contested auctions end for fairly low prices. And I, I can attest to this. I've seen some high quality domains go for very, very low cost, especially uh, when you look at the potential for these domains um, as, as the applications have been used on the existing internet, the things that we can do in the new internet, especially as you know, these use smart contracts. Um, it's just a whole new world. Imagine when the internet first came out, if every single website automatically spoke to every single other website on the internet. That technology only existed in a rudimentary level of exchanging basic information, but in a fundamental like root level of the code, if all the JavaScript connected with every other JavaScript in the entire internet, I, I, the internet we have today would look very, very different. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this evolves over the next five to ten years. <clears throat> uh, so the typical median uh, price of less than one ETH for names on the list, for names in the list, less than one ETH, or is it F? I've heard different people say it different way or 0.1 to 0.2 ether for names not on the list. Uh, adoption and ecosystem. So again, you can get all this information about these domains right from the source, and that source is registrar.ens.domains. The information uh, page where they have all their information is at ens.domains. Uh, there's my favorite tool, which is my ether wallet, abbreviated MEW. Uh, this is my ether wallet right here. And you can click right here under ENS and type in your name and start searching it. Check out my previous video for the process of uh, securing your name and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions to make that process more clear. <clears throat> uh, my Ether Wallet announced that they were getting a lot of support requests from people who are registering hundreds of domain names and so they're not going to be offering free support if you're registering hundreds of domain names. With that being said, I think it's in your best interest to register five or 10 or 20 as they relate to your family, your family's names and the businesses in, in your world. There's already been a secondary marketplace opened up. So people are just buying these domain names out of the, out of the gate and ens.trade has already created a service which is in beta, they're looking for bugs. We'll take a look at that in a second. But ens.trade where anyone is gonna be able to send their domain to this smart contract 
and then the smart contract will just put your domain name up for sale and someone will be able to purchase it, automatically receive that F domain, and then you'll just receive your F in exchange for that. And so this is uh, in the process of uh, being hashed out, getting all the bugs out, and then ENS.trade will probably be first to market for all of us to sell domain names who are interested in the secondary market. Uh, and just lots of cool to tools coming out of here. We have tools from ZK Labs and all sorts of really cool stuff. Etherchain announced ENS integration for looking up accounts and getting basic who is information. All of this is super basic right now, but I'm letting you know this is going to get really dynamic and there's going to be a lot of information. And, you know, minus maybe what your name is and, and stuff like that, everything that we're entering is all public. The addresses that are bidding, who owns a domain name, how things are moving around. Just keep in mind, this is all public information and it might not be directly connected back to you, but this is an amazing new world where it's a lot of similarities to the, the last world, but uh, there, there's definitely um, uh, differences that we want to be aware of. And um, and then what we're seeing here is just the, the software being created, the next level, the, the first level on top of the ENS system. And we just no, it will get more advanced. There will be competitors, and this is going to make our lives a lot easier. But we want to be involved now because by the time it gets easy and, and, and everyone understands what to do, the opportunity, the, the high-level, high-risk, high-reward opportunity at that point for the ENS domain names will be um, gr greater reduced. <clears throat> Uh, awesome. So really cool to tools coming out. This is the tool from uh, ZK Labs where we can pop in the, the different domain names over here and then they'll tell us when these domain names go available. So we see Ethereum.f is going available May 22nd, Blockchain.f going available on June 1st uh, with the dates and times over here. Sportsbet.f it says is available but it's actually in the reveal phase. So this tool isn't exactly perfect. Um, so don't depend on it 100%. I would depend on my Ether wallet or the registrar.ens.domains. And then uh, just to show you real quick, the ens.trade, I just think this is so cool, this came out so quick, that it completely runs using Ethereum smart contracts. So again, this is open source, decentralized, uh, or will eventually be decentralized in case they own root keys. <clears throat> but... Um, yeah, anyone can send an ENS at domain to ENS.trade smart contract where it gets stored safely. The user can then reclaim the name if you ever want by sending a transaction if you decide to no longer sell it. The seller sets up the minimum price that he or she is willing to take for it and that if, if an offer is placed, then it is at least that value. The name is automatically transferred to the buyer and the ether is sent to the seller. And then uh, offers can be placed and canceled at any time. Uh, and you know, I was in here, and there's there's people that are already receiving free ether for going through the code and doing some uh, bug bounty work, finding simple errors, and and getting rewarded for that. I definitely recommend that if you're a coder, you'd jump in Reddit and uh, see if you could help out with some of these projects that you have some faith in, because they're definitely willing to reward people for contributing and really helping in the communities. Um, this is a look at the website now. I was watching some testing happen on it earlier. Um, nothing going on right now. But there will be additional stuff happening. It's just amazing how much is happening, and it's just amazing how much is going on. Um, I uh, have look, been looking at the ENS system, and um, I've been making my lists of domains that I'm interested in. Um, if you look at yesterday's video, I have the Excel spreadsheet. You can click on that, and it's just a rudimentary, basic example of helping you organize your information. Uh, I, you know, take a look at that and organize your information. Start looking for the domains that are available for, again, your family, your family's names, your possibly your kids' names. You know, it's more than likely you're going to be able to secure your, your family's names and your kids' names for just 0.01F. Uh, you know, if you wanted Anthony.F, I think that went for 10 or 20F. It, it um, wasn't super simple, but at the same time, um, if you wanted, you know, Anthony Smith, 
Yeah, granted, there might be a lot of Anthony Smiths out there, but there's a, a decent chance you're going to be able to get that for a fairly low price. And as we've seen by the data for, you know, um, more than likely just 0.1 F or so. So, and then you have your business names, you have uh, major keywords, uh, and you have an opportunity. This is the land rush, and you're watching this video, so I think you have some idea that this is happening. If you haven't purchased your first name yet, then and you want to, then I, I would just recommend that you get on it as soon as possible because with these auctions, three days goes by and if someone else wants to get it before you, if they bid even the lowest amount possible, they're gonna get it for that, you know, what's what's now, as of today's value, a dollar thirteen. Last week it was 90 cents, you know, 0 0.01 F was 90 cents and now 0 0.01 F is a dollar thirteen. So I guess the lowest you're gonna be, be able to get it is for that. And with that, I wish you good luck. Uh, with that, I thank you for showing up. Uh, with that, if you found any of this information helpful, please hit that like button, pound that like button, uh, and subscribe to this video, share this video, and let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any uh, comments about um, how I'm doing, how these videos are going, and let me know if uh, there's any questions or anywhere I can provide clarity for you. Feel free to comment in the comments below. And with that, thank you for showing up. Uh, look forward to speaking with you again soon. And I'm glad together we're minting coins. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>